Hi there. Welcome to this office chat uh, in which I will reflect on developments uh, in the field of terrorism and counterterrorism and also research into terrorism and counterterrorism in recent weeks. Today is the 12th of May and uh, I think here in the Netherlands we still are very much focused on developments in France and especially in Brussels, the Brussels attacks that had a huge impact on uh, Europe in general and, and of course neighboring countries like the Netherlands in particular. Recently, um, uh, with some colleagues, we visited uh, Brussels and we saw that downtown Brussels, there's these places where people put uh, flowers and candles, there were demonstrations, you see uh, still a lot of uh, military on the street. And you can see that, that's, that that's, um, this, this attack still has an impact on daily life of people in, uh, in the capital of Europe. But it also is linked uh, to a uh, situation in the Netherlands in the sense that we have so had seen some arrests here in Rotterdam, 25 kilometers from here, um, where they um, arrested a, a suspected terrorist where, and they also found uh, ammunition for Kalashnikovs. And of course, a lot of people are worried about that. So worries about these attacks are uh, go beyond just Brussels and, and Paris, uh, but also many other European countries. It's also, of course, linked to the organization, the so-called Islamic State. And if we look at developments in Syria and Iraq, we see that they lose ground in some places, in Syria, in Palmyra, uh, some places in Iraq, but they also still manage to um, uh, stage attacks uh, in both countries. And uh, in general, they lose ground, but they gain ground in other places. Libya, for instance, also very worrisome. And if we look at the situation in Yemen, um, we see um, different developments. We see that Al-Qaeda, who managed to get a stronghold in, in uh, the um, southeastern part of Yemen, uh, has lost ground. But in these war zones, jihadist organizations like IS, like Al-Qaeda and other local groups, uh, they are still very powerful. Um, if we look at the situation closer to home in the United Kingdom, in Northern Ireland, uh, we see um, a development that is also a bit worrisome. The, the situation in Northern Ireland seemed to have imp has improved in, in recent years enormously. We didn't hear that much uh, about uh, the situation over there. But uh, recently, uh, the uh, government of the United Kingdom has raised the so-called Northern Ireland-related terrorism threat level from, uh, for Britain from moderate to substantial. And it shows that um, there's still uh, a reason to worry, that there's still groups that want to maybe use political violence. Uh, and it also shows that the, the lifespan of some of these groups can be very long, in this case, more than 100 years. So even when you seem to have the situation of under control, that there is peace and, and many positive developments, there's still groups that we have to worry about. So this lifespan is uh, something to worry about and let us hope that our children, let's say 90 years from, ya, from now, don't have to say the same thing about Syria. Let's hope lifespan is a lot shorter there. Then briefly about research. Um, together with the Royal United Services Institute and other think tanks and research institutes in the United Kingdom, we recently finished a project that was sponsored by the EU called Countering Lone Actor Terrorism. And the, um, uh, the findings of that two-year uh, long uh, research project you can find on the websites of RUSI, but also on the website of the ICCT, the International Center of Counterterrorism, based in The Hague, um, as well as in uh, the latest issue of the journal called Perspectives on Terrorism. It's an open access academic journal. And in the latest issue, you find two um, uh, articles with the key findings of our research into countering lone actor terrorism, so perspectives on terrorism. Uh, then um, um, I did this research, conducted this research with, uh, uh, amongst others, Janine de Roy van Zuiderwijn, and we're also very proud to um, announce the um, launch of a book published by Amsterdam University Press. Um, well, it's a small book, uh, an interesting book in Dutch. It's called Terrorisme. I referred to that also in a previous office chat, but uh, it will be launched in a week from now. And we'll also have a book launch in a bookstore, the biggest bookstore here in The Hague, called Paagman. So if you're interested, have a look at the website of Paagman. And if you're interested in this book, have a look at the website of Amsterdam University Press. 
it's even, I think, less. I'm not sure about the price. I think it's less than 10 euros. So it's a, an interesting, popular scientific book on terrorism. Um, maybe one day we'll translate it into English, but for now I can recommend, uh, still recommend the, um, the book that is uh, very much linked to this uh, massive open online course. Um, uh, it's called Terrorism and Counterterrorism Studies, Comparing Theory and Practice, and it was published by Leiden University Press, and it fits very well with uh, the co online course. It provides uh, similar information, but on top of that, uh, a lot of additional sources and insights. Um, then another recent uh, publication, also by Janine de Roy van Zuiderwijn and myself, is uh, a study for the National Counterterrorism Coordinator in the Netherlands, the NCTV, um, into the terrorism, the Netherlands Terrorism Threat Assessment. Uh, every every three months they have a, a new threat level, uh, same as in the United K Kingdom, and a report. And we studied the development of the threat level and also this whole system in general. Is it, um, um, is it something that we should uh, encourage, these threat levels? Well, more you find in the Dutch version, Barometer van de Dreiging, that was published in December, but there's also an English language uh, version and we publish that on ResearchGate. And it's sa the same holds for most of our publications. You can find them on ResearchGate. Well, currently we're working on uh, research into, um, or research on foreign fighters uh, and the impact they have or the potential risk they pose for not only the countries of origin, but also the trouble they make in, um, in, in the countries where they fight, Syria and Iraq. And we will brief you on the outcomes of that research after the summer break. That's it. Thank you very much.